So hello and welcome to this week's angling vlog. This week you join me on the banks of the River Dane and we're in search of chub. Now although this river does look very inviting today, you know, very wintry, it hides a secret. Last night and yesterday the whole country was covered in snow. These banks were all covered in it, so all that's melted and it's only going to go one place and that's in the river. So hopefully we can pick up a fish. The temperature's today, 10 degrees. Yesterday, it was zero. So this morning, I was in a bit of a rush. Dropped the kids off at school and nipped through. And I've left me tripod at home. So it's all gonna be behind the camera and GoPro today. If we get one, there's gonna be no holding it up to camera. The river does look nice. It looks better than I expected. It's got a bit of pace. There is a bit of clarity. Obviously, Mr. Dog in the background approved. So the rod that we're gonna be using today is the Corum Glide. I've teamed that up with the new switch reel that's new to Corbin, so I'm excited to see how that does today. On there I've got four pound, four ounce float fish, and that's down to a six number four stick float, some two pound, one ounce bait of pearl on, and that's down to a size 18 hook. I've been really organised and set myself up a dedicated stick float box and bolo box. So you can see there, I've got everything I need to be on the river, disgorgers, plummets, weights, floats, yeah, a nice little box just to grab and go. And when you're an all-round angler, it's good to have. So looking at the swim, it does look like it's got a bit of water in. And again, I am shocked that it has got a bit of clarity. Looking at the side tray, we've got a couple of pints of white maggot from the weekend and some fresh. You can see there some casters in them. So I did turn a few casters myself and got some Cheshire particle hemp. So that's the setup. Before I started, while I've been setting up, I've been drip feeding some maggots into the swim just to try and get some bait down that line. And the plan is to feed down the middle with maggots, hemp around about here, and we're going to just drop some casters in on this inside line here. Not too many casters there because I don't want to draw too many from the shoal if they're out there. Just a few that gives us somewhere else to go, and you never know, a greedy chub might just sit down there all day and we'll pick him up at last light, trying to cast her. That's the plan. I don't know how long we're gonna to have today because of how much water's gone in the river upstream and it's still going in. So let's make a start. So before we make a cast, what I'm just gonna do is just feed a bit of maggot into the swim. The river already does look a bit different than when it's set up. It looks like it's got just a bit more pace to it. And yeah, it's got a nice clarity, but it's one of them times where you come the river where you just don't know what you're going to be met with and how it's going to fish. And so we know from past experience with these chub, sometimes you can go in and get a bite straight away. And other times, you know, you've just got to persevere with it. It is a nice day to be on the bank, you know, it's, although it does look a bit drab and dreary, it's my favourite time to be on the bank. As you can see over there, that was all Himalayan balsam, you know, a week or two ago. And you can see how much it just opens up the bank, you know, to more swims. And so these early trots down the river are just about, you know, working your line out, making sure you've got the right size float on and you're in control of the river. If we can pick one chub up in the first hour of fishing, it'll be a great result. It really will be, and a great confidence boost. But with all that snow melt that's gone in, you know, and it has gone in overnight because it was still on the ground yesterday, it is going to be hard. But, you know, we're targeting the right type of fish, you know, dace, chub, grayling and a type of fish that will feed and we're into the first one of the day which is a great result really is a great confidence boost you know if we can catch one we can catch more and like I said at the start I did forget my tripod today 
so we won't be holding any of the fish up for camera but that is a great start that is what was that third cast down great great result lovely condition and great to get one so early we've got that chub that we've come for and anything else now is going to be a bonus so when you get that line right you know you get a bite it's probably been about 15 minutes of trotting and we're into another one and it's just come again just past halfway on that line there is a snag just on the inside of it which is a bit of grass i think that you know you get stuck on and it come off but if you just get that right line and that wind stays off a bit you know you get the bite So there we go and what a beautiful chub that is in absolutely mint condition and yeah I did think when he arrived today with the river having a bit of clarity we had a chance but it's a beautiful chub let's get him straight back And there we go, there's number three, as you can see there, well on the feed, and yeah, going really well. And you can always tell from a blogging point of view when it's going well, when you can leave the GoPro on for a bit and, you know, hope that you get one or two. A lot smaller this one and be a sign if Mr Pike's about in this slack whether he's about what, a little chublet on a winter's day after the frosts and the snow more than welcome and chub number three a little small guy but again in amazing condition you can see there not a scale out of place and definitely coming onto that line of maggots and like I say when you get that presentation right there are fish there so three chub in the first hour is better than I could have expected. You know, them fish are responding to the maggots going in. And like I always say, the main thing to do is not to lose one. There's obviously one or two down there, and who knows, a bigger chub could be holding at the back. Regular followers of the channel will recognize the swim, but when conditions are uncertain, you know, it was minus one yesterday, and it's 10 today, so you don't know what you're coming to. You've got to go to places where you've got confidence you've had fish in the past. You know, if you'd have gone to a new swim today, you'd be questioning whether or not there was even fish in the area. Whereas over the years, this has been, you know, a good spot for me for catching chub. So you've got to come to somewhere, you know, where you've got confidence. When it's think it's going to be hard, you don't want to be thinking of the fish even here. So, yeah. A beautiful morning on the bank certainly better than being sat at my desk at home or in work and what a view beautiful so as is sometimes the case the shoal does back off and this bike come right down the swim and definitely a chub it's gone straight for that dead or dying reed bed on the other side he's going to try and get down this inside he definitely knows where to go. Yeah, definitely a chub. Absolutely amazing condition. They really are. Beautiful fish. And yeah, number four. Been fishing probably about an hour, maybe. And yeah. Beautiful fish. Let's get it straight back. So a word that I do use on the channel a lot of the time is windows of opportunity and hopefully this blog shows that you know yesterday freezing today a bit warmer and then tomorrow it's give it snowing again so you can see how today is that little window of opportunity to try and get a bite you know conditions wise and yeah you've got a chance today 
yesterday when it was absolutely Baltic and freezing would you have got a bite it's hard to tell but today a little bit warmer you've got that window and you've always got a chance most important thing now is to remain disciplined you know it'd be dead easy now to start chucking you know double pouches of maggots in and really force it but I'm just gonna take me time just gonna keep feeding well that many maggots into the swim a pouch of hemp every now and again and then they do look too good to waste really but I'm gonna keep just dropping them on that inside line but it's the first time I've ever really turned casters that and they don't look too bad you know they all sink so it might be something that I do in future you know for fishing on the river of a weekend just turn some casters in the week but yeah day off work proper made up so it's been about an hour now and we've not had another bite the pace on the river has increased slightly it does feel like I'm in and out a bit quicker the beauty of stick floats is it's dead easy to change over you know the stems are the same and generally the width of the top is as well so you can get away with just changing really quickly so I'm going to change from a 6 to a 10 number 4 and just like that we changed over same rubbers just a different float let's get a few more shot on the line and see if it makes any difference and just looking at the swim you can just see now the pace has increased out there and there's a lot more boils appearing through the swim it's not that smooth glass it was before on this inside and that is just because there's a bit more water coming into it and of course we all know that water that's going in today is cold and it's snow melt and it's all the grit off the roads so it's not a good rise normally if you get a rise during a session it's good the fish think the river's gonna rise and they go on the feed hard for a bit but when that water's freezing cold going in it's the opposite you know that rise is cold and it can knock it on the head and just that extra weight and the float going down the line in a more straight line and being a bit more in control of the river just amazing what a difference it makes well, the second shot down we picked up a bite and it does just show you know sometimes you can just get in to a you know a routine of going down the same line and just forget sometimes little changes are needed and what a beautiful fish the grayling is I'm amazed he's being so calm but it is a fish that does remind me of when I started you know stick float fishing on the river day and we used to fish for these and they used to be pound two pound maybe it's something we should go back and try again you see Really hard to hold, but we'll get him straight back. Just amazing how one little change can make so much of a difference. And just being that bit more in control and keeping on that far line, like the fast lane to the middle lane line, and not letting the river drag me in. We had that grayling, and now we just got another bite looks like a little small chub it just shows the difference it makes so we set out today hoping to get one chub and that's number five so we've got to be happy now if the river continues to just keep coming up obviously it gets to a point where you can't float fish it so hopefully it stays at this pace now and we can pick up a few more but that is another one it's in absolutely mint condition so after that chub the river did begin to rise and as you can see on screen now really picked up pace and for the float fishing become unfishable as you can see from the final net we had a great few hours at the start with plenty of bites from those chub and it was just great to get out on the bank so one of the things that i do say on the vlog a lot is windows of opportunity and it is something that people do ask me what do i mean 
and this one is a great little session to look at the end and analyze so if you look at the chart that i've put up on screen here now the next day you can see round about 12 o'clock the river began to rise quite rapidly and that coincided really with us losing the bites and not getting any more fish when you go back at the end of the day it gives you that focus point to look what was the fishing like and when did it deteriorate and what was the river doing and it's quite clear at that point when the river began to rise we got the odd shove and a little bit of a grayling and then when it went no more bites what that allows you to do is read the river that you're fishing and know its behavior i knew before i hit the bank on this day that there was too much snow melt on the ground for the river not to rise there was just too much water going into the system for it not to see a rise at some point so when i arrived on the bank around about half past eight quarter to nine i knew the clock was ticking you know at some point that river was going to rise there was just too much water for that river to handle and i've built that knowledge up over the years of just learning how the water affects it and how much water will make it rise and that's how you can pick little windows of opportunity target the rivers when they're fishable and you know you've got to be quick this session here today we managed to get a few fish on the bank and a bend in the rod had we gone the next day the river would have been in the fields and unfishable and that's a little insight there how i go about my fishing and you know you can get out on the bank at the right time and get a few bites that does bring the video to an end there now and hopefully that little bit at the end gives you a little bit of an insight into my fishing i want to wish you all tight lines in your own fishing if you enjoyed the video please leave it a like and subscribe and i'll catch us all next week tight lines